Hello there, I'm glad you could join me today. In this video, we're gonna do a quick abstract painting using some of my image hose nozzles. These nozzles are available in my custom workspace, which you can download on my website, aaronrutten.com. I'm gonna go ahead and look in my nozzle libraries and I'm gonna select the primitive nozzle that's in the abstract category. And if we look up here at the image preview, it's suggesting that we use spray size P angle W. So if we look over here in the image hose brushes in my custom brush palettes, we want to find spray size P angle W, but we could really use any of these image hose brushes, but let's just test it with this one and see what happens. So it's going to spray out and I can control the size with pressure. So if I press down firmly, I get bigger shapes. If I press down lightly, I get smaller shapes. If we make our brush diameter bigger, then the shapes are going to come out bigger overall when I press down firmly. If I make it really small, then the shapes are gonna max out at that size there. It looks kind of like hair. So you probably don't wanna use a brush that's too small for this. We can try out some of the other brushes. Linear size P will just spit these shapes out single file. If you wanna see what these shapes are, you can click with your mouse too. They are a black line with a white fill, but when you paint with them together, you get some interesting patterns. Let's try linear size P angle D. And this is a little bit different in that it follows the direction of your brush. So rather than coming out single file, always upright, these shapes curve and follow the contour of your stroke. But what it's doing is it's contouring like this rather than the linear size P. They're all upright, but you paint in a certain direction with them. So enough talk about the nozzle. Let's take a look at how to use it. You can really use any of these brushes that you want. I'm gonna try this spray brush because that'll kind of distribute them a little bit better and cover more space. And I'm gonna use a bigger brush and just paint in some shapes here. Now, if you wanna do one solid pattern like this, you can do that. Or you could have a shape, you could pick out a silhouette of something, or you could just do something abstract like this. It's kind of like a cloud, you can almost see an object in it. And abstract art is interesting for me because it's kind of difficult to teach because it's not something that I can show you a reference image and say, this is how you paint something abstract. It's very different from painting realistically. And what you paint doesn't have to resemble anything. It can just be really anything, a bunch of shapes or a bunch of lines, whatever you want. There is a general model that you can follow for all artwork, and that is the seven elements of art, which are shape, form, line, color, texture, space, and value. And you can use all seven of these in your artwork, or you can use just a few of them. But no matter what kind of art you make, you'll inevitably be using at least one of those. So if abstract art isn't painting realistically, then what can you do to make a good abstract painting? Well, you wanna think of it like this. You want your gestures to have feeling. If you can see that your paint's kind of spraying out from a certain direction, or it's you know, really rough and rugged in some areas, and you know, big and broad in others, that almost gives the impression that you were moving your hand in a very gestural way, that there was some emotion behind it. You can also show emotion through the colors that you choose. Shapes and negative space convey an environment. There's a lot going on here. This is really crowded. But if I were to just put a few shapes here, they look very isolated, like there's not much going on in the environment. And it looks kind of lonely. Or it looks like the shapes are all huddled together for safety. We can add texture to give the piece tangibility. If you want it to look worn, this can be paint texture, canvas texture, dirt and grime, aging, anything you want. But it just makes the piece look used or like it's had some experience and it's been around for a while. So those are some concepts that you can use while you're creating your artwork. I'm going to put in some shapes here. Maybe I want this just to be kind of an abstract shape. And you can take out your eraser and erase over anything. Now I'm just working on the canvas. I don't normally do that, but for this piece, I'm not really worried about having a bunch of layers. But you could, of course, create a new layer and then paint on that instead if you want your layers to be separate. I might go ahead and add a few more bigger shapes too. I'm gonna to select linear size P. I'm gonna make a bigger brush and I'm gonna put in a few big shapes. So while I'm doing this, let's evaluate what I have so far. I have line, I have shape, I have form. If you think about this big amorphous blob, that's form. I have space because I have negative space and positive space, but I don't yet have any color, texture, or value. So I'm more than halfway there. I think something like that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some color next. I'm just gonna simply select my paint bucket. If you wanted to paint these in by hand, you certainly could. I'll zoom in here pretty close, grab that paint bucket again. And now you can just start filling it in with whatever colors you like, whatever comes to mind. I know it's hard to choose colors sometimes, 
So if you want a little bit of help doing that, you have your Corel Painter color wheel here. So you could pick a color. You could say, maybe I want yellow to be my main dominant color here. Well, what goes good with yellow? You can use color theory to figure that out. Go to color.adobe.com, and that's a great website for coming up with color schemes. So I'm going to go ahead and pick that yellow color. And right now I have monochromatic selected for the color rule, but I want to change that to something else. Let's try complementary, and you can see right across from this yellow is indigo, but there's also lots of different kinds of yellow. So if you were in this more orangey yellow, you might have a different shade of blue than if you were in a more lime yellow, which starts to get more towards purple. But we want a few more hues than this, so let's try something more complex. We could look at triad, and you can see that it splits in a different way. So if I have that yellow color, then I have a whole different color scheme I could use here, and this looks kind of nice. You can also play with these colors, shift them around, make them lighter, darker, or more saturated, or less saturated. If you want really bright colors, you can turn up the saturation on all these. We can also look at compound. We could use any of these colors, and they'd look pretty nice together. And we could look at monochromatic, which means that you don't shift the hue, you just pick shades that are a little bit different. I think I kind of like the way that triad looked. So now we can see all the values here, and we could remember these numbers or write them down and type them into Corel Painter, but really what's easier is to use something like a screen capture tool. I'm using this free snipping tool that comes with Windows. I'm just going to click on New. I'm going to drag a cursor that encompasses all of my swatches here, and I'm just going to save that. And then we can locate that swatches file, click open. We'll just go ahead and click on OK. Now we have our handy little palette here that we can sample from very easily using the color dropper. So let's zoom out a bit and let's go ahead and move our swatches somewhere where they're not covering up our artwork. Let's go back to the canvas layer, which has our lines on it. Let's select the paint bucket. Let's sample one of our colors. Let's start with the yellow and let's just go ahead and fill in now. Obviously, if you use bigger, broader shapes and fewer shapes, you're going to have a lot less to fill in. If you use a lot of shapes or really tiny shapes, you're going to be here forever filling this in. So just keep that in mind. I did quite a few shapes here, so <laughs> I'm probably going to have to time lapse this a little bit so that you're not watching me fill this in for a half hour. Now you can really fill this in however you want. There's really no rule to this because it's abstract art. But what I like to do is minimize two of the same colors touching each other. So for instance, I've already got a yellow here. I wouldn't want to put another yellow next to it. That just looks weird to me. I'd rather have a blue next to it and then maybe red surrounding that. You're probably going to get to a point to where two colors have to touch each other, but you can decide what to do there. If you need to add more colors to your palette, you can do that. You can always choose variants of this color. For instance, if I wanted more blues like this, I could select this blue and then I can choose anything in here just as long as I don't move the hue. So if I wanted a light blue, I could add a light blue. If I wanted a dark blue, I could have a dark blue and increase my color palette that way. So maybe I'll just have that weird dark blue in the middle and I won't use it at any other point here. Feel free to zoom in and out as you need to as well. Once you have some colors put down, you can also sample from these colors here. That way you don't have to go back and look at your swatches. I've added some color. And I've also added some value, and value is the lightness or darkness in a piece, or the range of light and dark. So I have a darker color, I have some medium colors, I don't really have a whole lot of light colors, so maybe I'll go ahead and sample this yellow here, and I'll make it lighter, and I'll add in some of that to add some value. I also think a lighter blue might be nice, so I'll go ahead and pick that. But now you can see a lot of thought goes into making abstract art. So when people go, oh, it's just a bunch of shapes and colors, you can go, no, actually, I used all seven elements of art and I used color theory. And don't be afraid to zoom into these fine areas here and fill in some here. You don't have to fill in everything. If you want to leave some areas white, that's perfectly fine, too. I'm certainly going to do that. I think I'm happy with something like that. I'm going to go ahead and hide my swatches. Now let's add the final element of art, which is texture. I'll go ahead and create a new layer above my canvas. I'm going to select the square chalk brush, and you can look for different papers here. I'm going to try simulated wood grain. I'm going to select white, and then I'm just going to paint over the whole thing. That gives it a little bit of texture. 
Now, if you wanted that texture to show up better, you can also tone your canvas. So I'm going to create a layer in between the texture and the canvas. I'm going to set the composite method to multiply. And I'll select a light yellow color like this. You could also use a light gray or really any color that you want. I'm going to go ahead and fill using Edit Fill. Now this texture will show up much better. I'm going to go back to the texture layer. I'm going to create a layer above that. Call this Sponge. I'll set the composite method to multiply. I'm going to pick kind of a dirty color here. Select the sponge and put some texture over it. I'll use a few different colors here and there so it's not all the same color. We can reduce the opacity of that layer. Do the other texture as well. I want it to be subtle. Something like that looks good for me. We could try some other textures. Let's create a new layer for dots. Let's use that chalk again. And this time let's use the small dots paper texture. Now you can play with the texture scale and contrast. I'm going to turn the scale up. I'm going to sample my background color here, which is this tan color. And I can paint these dots. I might need to zoom in for you to be able to see that there at home. You can see it creates that nice dot pattern. If you want that pattern to be bigger, you can increase the scale and you get bigger dots. So I'm going to make my scale pretty big here. Add in some dots texture and then reduce the opacity of that layer. We can also play with the composite method. We can change that to overlay. That gives us a different kind of blend with the layers underneath. And I'd say that looks pretty good to me. I don't think there's anything else I'd like to add to this piece. You could of course create a new layer if you wanted to and use something like the scratch board tool to sign your name. And with that, we have a finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, take a quick second to like this video. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. I have a lot more videos that'll teach you how to create digital paintings like this. If you want to learn more about creating artwork with Corel Painter, check out my downloadable video training course. That's available on gumroad.com slash Aaron Rutten. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.